everybody, welcome back. My name is Sparks and this is Game Mode 4, the series where we build command block modules that enhance and change your game playing experience in vanilla Minecraft. And today we're going to do something a little different in the snapshot. Alright, so with me today we have Bannerwolf to show off this design. He came up with the idea after we were playing around with, uh, with the new uh, armor stands uh, and sort of been working on building it so between us we've come up with some cool uses for it uh, so the basic idea is that if you throw some TNT on the ground it turns into a landmine and if you step on it it uh, blows you to high heaven um, and it's uh, basically summons some TNT uh, at the location of the mine now there's um you can throw it uh, if you throw another one on top it won't add to it or anything you can only place one per block um, but you can place them next to each other, things like that, and you can break them in survival by, uh, if you want to punch it a couple of times, banner, uh, you can, you can basically break them in survival, uh, you've got to click a couple of times, there you go, so, oh, you weren't in survival, okay. Yeah, and I am. Should be able to break it. Yeah. There you go. So you do get the stand back, but I think... Since you don't get the TNT back, it's kind of an okay trade-off. So that's the basic. The basic idea is, you know, you can throw it on the ground and it turns into a landmine. If somebody steps on it, it goes boom. But Banner and I have taken this <laughs> to a bit of another level. So the first of the projects that we've come up with is this. This is one of the traps that we've been working on. Um, so if Banner Wolf would like to mine away at the TNT tree, um, <laughs> basically explodes. We, uh, we basically stuck a, a TNT... Uh, charge inside so you basically go four blocks up I'm going to demonstrate with this glass your TNT goes on the uh, fourth block and then you get a piston and you power it and you'll notice that the TNT drops down it gets uh, pushed by the piston so that is now technically in this block here which is at head height and it's the block most people mine first so we can break this block for example and nothing would happen but if you try and break this one it will explode <laughs> so that's the idea with the TNT um, I should actually mention, as a, as a result, uh, you can step on a landmine to set it off, but it will also explode if you break the block that it is in, so you can't just dig it up. It's uh, one of the features I built in. And it can also be triggered by entities. So, uh, items don't trigger it, but... <laughs> sorry, Banner. Uh, I, could, I could summon uh, a pig. Oh. Come on, pig. What's wrong with the pig? I have no idea. Oh, that'll do. Spider then. <laughs> oh, apparently you blew up. So yeah, entities can uh, can set off the traps, and uh, that's basically it. We have uh, one or two other little traps we've built, which we'll, we'll cut to. I'll show you those as well. So most of you have probably realised that this is using the new uh, armor stands, such as these two here. The uh, armor stands are available in survival, but in creative you can make them tiny using a small NBT data tag, and you can also give them items in their head. Now this is a dummy one, it won't, it won't explode. That's an important thing to note with this system. It, it's completely integratable with vanilla. Uh, ordinary TNT is going to act the same, uh, and you can use ordinary stands the same as before as well. Um, so the actual module is just these set of blocks over here, so these weird there, uh, this set of blocks over here, it's uh, 12 command blocks total, uh, two of them are for creating the, the hyper clock, so this one here is setting air, and this one here is setting redstone blocks, and they're just, you know, it's a hyper clock, and then there's also over here, this one here is adding the uh, landmine scoreboard, so you can actually remove that once the scoreboard's been added, but just for plug and play capability it adds that scoreboard for you um, so that's the that's the hyper clocks and the landmine scoreboards and that leaves nine other command blocks I've you can put these in any order on this um, on this line of redstone you can see it's basically just goes all the way through um, but I've just sort of laid them out in an order that makes chronological sense so we start by detecting when somebody drops some TNT so what we're doing here is um, we are trying to add one to all all items landmine score if they are a TNT item so it's this item ID Minecraft TNT and if they're touching the ground so um, I've got the scoreboard on the side so if I throw this you'll notice that uh, when it hits the ground you get uh, the landmine score starts counting up um, so you see that it got to three at the bottom there so basically as soon as it lands on the ground it starts adding one to its score uh, the second thing we do is we create a landmine. So uh, we're saying that any item with a landmine score of exactly two, so of maximum two and minimum two, 
is going to summon an armor stand with a load of data tags and this is going to create our landmine so first of all it's got uh, the equipment slot and the it basically the equipment order goes um, hand feet leggings chest plate and then head and we are going to put a TNT um, item in the head and we're going to give it a special display name landmine this is going to come in handy later uh, it's basically for bug fixing and it's going to have a custom name of landmine uh, and so that we can differentiate it from other ordinary uh, armor stands and uh, you can also create, make it small using the one tag and we're turning gravity off so if you break the block it doesn't fall uh, finally the invisible tag it's currently set to zero. If I set it to one, you wouldn't be able to see the stand part of this. You'd only see the TNT. And this actually looks a lot better. However, you can't break it if it's invisible. I don't know why, but you can't. It's very inconvenient. So for now, I've left the, the invisible tag as zero rather than one. Uh, the next thing we do, we've got our, we've got our landmine created on the ground. Uh, we are going to give the landmine a life score. Uh, which is what you saw going up earlier so uh, for all armor stands we're going to add one to the landmine score constantly if they have a custom name of landmine so these guys here don't have a custom name of landmine they're not going to get a score but the uh, i'm going to throw this on the edge of this block this landmine here you can see the score constantly rising there it's just counting its own life uh, and this is useful um, for the rest of the system i'm just going to clear that okay um, so once we've got the life given to it, we're going to kill the thrown TNT. So when you throw the TNT on the ground, you'll notice that it vanishes. So it's gone now. Uh, it's just a landmine. And the way that this works is that um, all landmines, all armor stands with a name of with a landmine score of exactly one, so they've just been created, will kill any item with a landmine score of one or more, and that's the closest item. Uh, with a radius of zero so basically the only thing it's going to kill is tnt because uh, a tnt item thrown on the ground is the only thing being given a landmine score that is an item so that way if you throw a stack it will destroy the whole stack but if we get um some more tnt um it will only destroy tnt when it's landmine score is one and you can see it's constantly rising so if i throw some tnt on top of it now it doesn't destroy the TNT, um, so you can pick it up and it doesn't it doesn't ruin that for you. Uh, so that's basically the reason for that. Um, once you've kin killed the thrown TNT, you're going to uh, cause entities to set it alight. So I've currently got it set up so that any entity that is not an item will set it off. Uh, if you wanted to do it so that items can set it off too, you just get rid of that. Um, I can't remember, what, was it written in there now? I hope it was that. It's probably that. Yeah, it's probably that. Um, so any entity that isn't an item is going to, um, on behalf of the land, uh, on behalf of the landmine, um, summon some prime TNT, uh, one block above the landmine. So I'll just put it down here, and you can see that when I stand on it, for a brief moment, you can see a piece of TNT up here, and that's basically some primed TNT with a zero fuse. Uh, you could also, if you didn't want it to damage the terrain, you could set mob griefing to false uh, in your game rules and then summon a, a creeper with a ignited score of 1 and a fuse of 0. Um, but I decided to use TNT because it does more damage to the player. Um, and you can also detonate it if it's mined. So this is a very si similar system. Uh, it's basically on behalf of all armor stands with a landmine score of at least 2 uh, that detect that they are inside an air block they'll summon a TNT, prime TNT, at one block above their location. So this way, um, you can have, uh, like we showed earlier, anything that isn't in an air block. So, um, for example, we can put it in a trap door. Uh, and this is... That's not, a, that's not a TNT. There we go. So that is not inside an air block, even if you open this. But as soon as you break that thing there, it discovers that it's inside an air block. It thinks somebody's trying to mine it up, and it will kill itself now you see there's a there's a landmine in there with a score of a million now and i'll explain that in a second too that's part of the bug catching so it's been detonated when it's mined the next thing is that uh, we want to make sure that there's no more than one mine per block so what we're going to do is any uh from the creation of the mine we know that any um item with a landmine score of exactly two will summon an armor stand um but it will only 
start to count up once it hits the ground. So this TNT falls and then starts counting. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to give it a score of higher than 2 before it hits the ground. It's never going to have a score of 2. So what this one here does is any um, any armor stand that is, that is a landmine is going to add 5 to the score of any item of above it that is a TNT item. So that way, before it hits the ground, it has a score of 5. It's never going to have a score of 2, and therefore we'll never, we'll never be able to summon another landmine in that spot. So instead... It just stays there, and I can just break that. And it's just the one, just the one landmine there. So that's that's very useful. You can't uh, stack them together. The next thing is we need to stop them breeding. So when an armor stand like this one is destroyed by TNT, the TNT in the head drops off, and it lands on the ground, and it turns into another mine. So what we're going to do is we are, um, if you remember, when we created this landmine, we gave that TNT block in the head uh, this item TNT here tag has a display name of landmine and a custom name of landmine so what we're going to do is uh, any item um, is going to be given a landmine score of a million if it has a display name of landmine so exclusively TNT blocks that pop off the heads of these landmines are going to give us get a score of a million and then we finally oh I didn't post the paste that command in it's over here. Uh, it's the bottom one right here. Uh, we are going to... That's not it at all. There we go. So we're going to kill any item with a landmine score of a million or more. Uh, and that basically stops that TNT from popping off and landing back on the ground. Uh, whoops. So you can see when I step on this, we're going to get an item with a score of a million. And that is the TNT item that drops off the off the armor stand. It's given a score of a million and then it's killed. <sighs> Quite a long explanation actually. I'm sorry about that, but uh, the commands for this are in the description. You can also download the um, the uh, world in the description of this video and you can also get the schematic. So if you want to play around with this, that's cool. Um, let me know what you get up to with it. Uh, Banner and I had fun inventing some traps that uh, are activated with it. I think it would be very fun to mix this up with UHC actually. So, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for watching as always everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, if you want to, you can click on the top left video that's playing right now, and that'll take you to a another video where Banner and I play around a little bit, we test some things out and build some traps using the TNT uh, landmines, so you're welcome to go check that out if you want to get some inspiration for how they can be used. A uh, bit of a longer video than usual, uh, but there was a lot to explain, so hopefully people don't mind that too much. As always, if you have ideas, you're welcome to suggest them in the comments for a Game Mode 4 plugin. Um, download and schematic are in the description as always, and uh, yeah, if you want to send me your designs, I may use them, I may feature them. Uh, thanks for watching.